Welcome to market failure. So the market will fail if there are inefficiencies. There are three types of inefficiencies in the market. Number one is productive inefficiency. So productive inefficiency occurs when the market fails to produce at the lowest possible cost. The second type of inefficiency is allocative inefficiency. Allocative inefficiency occurs when the market fails to produce the right amount of goods and services that consumers want. And number three is Pareto inefficiency. So Pareto inefficiency simply states that you cannot make someone better off without making someone else worse off. So basically, you cannot please everyone in the market. We can also understand inefficiency by looking at the production possibility curve, the PPC. Uh, the PPC is the black curve that's concave down. And we can also look at the indifference curve. So in the, the indifference curve is the red curve that is concave up. So every point on the production possibility curve is efficient, productively efficient, I should say. So point A is on the production possibility curve, point B, point C, point D. Because these points are on the PPC, they are all productively efficient points. However, only point C, this is where the indifference curve, you can see the indifference curve touches the PPC. So only at point C do we have allocative efficiency. So only, only point C will be allocatively efficient. So all the points on the PPC are productively efficient, but only the point where the indifference curve touches the PPC will be allocatively efficient. Point E is inefficient. Point F is not attainable. It cannot be achieved. We've got six causes of market failure. So the imperfect markets, number one. So the monopolies, oligopolies, monopolistic competition. These markets are inefficient and they cause market failure. Missing markets, so markets that are not provided for, such as the market for public goods. We know that public goods are not provided for in the market because there's no profit in providing public goods, such as um, community or collective goods. So they are undersupplied, and this causes market failure. Whereas demerit goods, goods that are bad for society, are oversupplied, also a cause of market failure. Immobility means you cannot move. So the immobility of factors of production, you cannot move the four factors of production to where you need them. That will also cause market failure. Uneven distribution of wealth. So the wealth of the nation is not evenly distributed. There are inequalities. Some people have more than others. And that means that people cannot participate in the same way in the market. So that will cause market failure. Missing information. The information is not there in the market to allow for productive efficiency and allocative efficiency. So because there's lack of information, there's inefficiency, which causes market failure. The last one, externalities, also called spillovers. So externalities can be costs or benefits to society that the market does not account for. Positive externalities would be benefits, but negative externalities would be cost to society. But these costs and benefits um, are not reflected in the market price. So let's look at this with um, aid of a graph. All right, let's start with the positive externality, right? Of course, positive externality would be a benefit to society, whereas a negative externality would be a cost. So let's go back to the positive externality benefits to society. The market only looks at the marginal private benefit and the marginal private cost. 
So the marginal private benefit represents the demand, whereas the marginal private cost represents the supply. But the market does not look at the externality, right? It only looks at the marginal private benefit. So for a positive externality, we're only looking at the marginal private benefit, but we're not looking at a benefit to society. If we want to see the benefit to society, so the marginal social benefit, we need to add to the marginal private benefit, we need to add the externality. Uh, or we can write it as the marginal external benefit. So this is the benefit to um, society. All right, benefit to society is the private benefit plus the externality. But the market does not account for the externality, does not account for the marginal external benefit. So, but if we want to see the actual benefit to society, we need to add the marginal external benefit. So, um, if we add the marginal uh, external benefit, then we're going to get a new curve, a new demand curve, which also shows, let's call this D1, the actual marginal social benefit. So this one is only looking at the private benefit, but the new curve is also looking at the benefit that society gets. So in order to get to the social benefit, we need to add an externality. We've got a new quantity there. We also have a new price there. This triangle is the external benefit or the positive externality. So if we add this triangle to the private benefit, then we get the marginal social benefit. But remember, the market does not account, it doesn't add this externality. So this is why the market fails. This triangle represents the, extern the externality or the marginal external benefit to society, but the market does not account for this. It's the same for cost. Remember, um, the cost that companies incur does not also look at the cost to society or the marginal social cost. So remember, whenever there's production, you also have pollution and there's also crime. So, but the market price does not look at these negative externalities. The market price simply looks at the marginal private cost. It doesn't look at the social cost. So if we want to add the cost to society as well, we will have a new supply curve, which is the marginal social cost. Social cost means the cost to society. But how do we get to this marginal social cost? We know that that new supply curve, let's call it S1, will have its own quantity. We can call it Q1 and its own price. We can call that price P1. Now this triangle here, the right angle triangle over here represents the negative externality that the market does not account for. So when you take the marginal cost and you add this triangle, the marginal externality, then you can get the marginal social cost. So if you want to see the true cost to society, marginal social cost, you need to take the private cost, the marginal private cost, and add this externality, this triangle, the marginal external cost, so that you can find the true cost to society. But remember, the market only looks at the private cost. It doesn't look at the externality in the social cost. This is why it fails. And we said also for benefits, the market only looks at the marginal private benefit. It doesn't look at the uh, externalities, the positivity, and the marginal social benefit. So this is why the market fails. Thank you, great talks.